Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is Friday, December 11th, 2020. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, this weekend, we're going to get some fights with some highly talented guys. One of them is Shakur Stevenson. Now, understand Shakur Stevenson is a southpaw. He's blessed with hand speed. For his division, he's blessed with size. Understand, he's 5'8". Most of his opponents are not as tall as him. They don't have the reach he has. Let me just say that I expect Shakur Stevenson to beat Con Carey because Stevenson creates space. He has ring coverage. He can be outside, especially with his reach advantage, especially with his height. He can be outside and know how to step in the pocket and hit you where you are too far away to hit him. He makes opponents pay for getting in the pocket with him. And of course, he has hand speed and power. But let me say this. What I try to do is to look at the future, right? I don't believe Khan Kari has the foot speed to bridge the distance between himself and Shakur Stevenson. But Stevenson needs room to operate. He needs room to operate. There will come a time where we're here online talking about an opponent who, unlike his opponent this weekend, might actually be able to move inside the pocket and smother his dominant left hand. Right? I believe that if an opponent can time Stevenson, jump in the pocket, get close to Stevenson, tie up Stevenson's dominant hand, and then hit the slender Stevenson on that side of his body, that opponent might have success. Right? Stevenson is calling out some fighters right now. Right? Lomachenko, for example. Stevenson feels he can beat Lomachenko. There's some matchups out there that'll be interesting. Gervonta Davis. Bigger punch than Stevenson. Right? If Davis knows that he has to get inside on you, and this is a guy who backed up Leo Santa Cruz. Right, if a heavy-handed guy like Gervonta Davis can crash the pocket, is willing to trade, is willing to get hit with Stevenson's left hand, which has pop, right, can crouch, take away Stevenson's left hand to the body, get inside and start to riddle Stevenson on the left side of his body, that's when things would get interesting. Stevenson's already a champion. Folks, he's much better than the competition he's facing, including Khan Kari. I did think the scoring in the Kid Galahad fight, which is in my favorites folder here, uh, that Khan Kari had was a bit ridiculous. I thought that was a close fight. I do think Khan Kari is talented. In his corner is Freddie Roach, right? He just doesn't have the foot speed and suddenness. You need Sean Porter, right? A guy in a different weight class. Con Carey just doesn't have Sean Porter type quickness and foot speed to jump in the pocket and to force Stevenson to fight back the way Porter forced Errol Spence to fight back. Until that happens, Shakur Stevenson is going to continue to steamroll over opponents as it is. He's an unbeaten champ. I'm expecting Stevenson to do what Stevenson does and win his fight this weekend. Let's talk about 
for me, a far more intriguing fight. Now, all of us, in whatever sport, right, people who gamble, have secret lists, right? There's that team that you have that, for whatever reason, has been forgotten by the public or perhaps was never even recognized by the public. They're overlooked by the public. Now, Teofimo Lopez calls himself the takeover. An argument can be made, I'm making it here, that the toughest fight that he had was his fight against Nakatani. Right? Who you'll see in the background of this video. Now, Nakatani is fighting a guy who was 2014's ESPN Prospect of the Year. This guy is only 27 years old. Again, 27 years old now. He was to fight for the championship against Terry Flanagan. That fight fell through. He was out of the ring for 13 months. He hopped in the ring unmotivated against Antonio Lozada, a guy he was supposed to dominate. If you look at the film of that fight, he's putting up a hell of a fight. Lozada is bigger than him, just like Nakatani is. Just like Nakatani is an imposer, his fight style is to trade with you, right? Understand why Nakatani gave Teofimo Lopez a hard fight. It's because Lopez is a technician. In other words, he sees you start to throw a punch. He sees your shoulder move. And he has a hand up. He has a lean going to have the punch pass by him. Think Floyd Mayweather. Well, the problem, though, is that Nakatani's punches have a loop on them. Right? You know, the great basketball player Bill Russell used to have a saying. The great ones are always different. I'm not calling Nakatani who gets hit with too many shots great. But what I am saying is he's tough for an opponent who's precise. Right? Keep in mind, Floyd Mayweather in interviews has said his toughest opponent was Emmanuel Augustus, a journeyman who was unorthodox. Nakatani is unorthodox. If you're an opponent into precision, if you're an opponent who sees him move a certain way and you say, oh, right hand, let me catch that, let me move away, then the right hand has some loop on it. And the opponent is big with a long reach, throwing it from awkward angles. You could be in trouble, right? This is like the baseball pitcher who has the odd release point on his windup, right? You're there saying, my God, where, you know, when's he going to throw it? Then suddenly the ball's up on you, right? This is the underhand thrower, Dan Quisenberry, if you're an old-time baseball fan, where you're accustomed to seeing a guy throw it over the top. Suddenly, this guy comes in, different motion. You can't even pick up the ball until it's halfway to the plate. That's the game Nakatani has, and he has power. He landed some flush shots on Teofimo Lopez, a hell of a lot more than Lomachenko did. Right? Lopez couldn't put him away. You saw Lopez's punching power against Kami Lomachenko, but yet against Nakatani, Nakatani was there. Nakatani forces you to fight. In the later rounds. Right? You know, you say, okay, I'm off to a bad start in this fight. Let me turn it around. And then the other guy's like, ah, oh, nah, nah, player. I'm here to win. Right? Well, let me just say this. The guy he's fighting is on my list of one of the guys who I would have a live dog as a live dog, 
against the elites in boxing. Felix Verdejo, you need to know the name. If he fought Teofimo Lopez, I'm guessing he would be a greater than two to one underdog. Even though the guy only has one loss to Antonio Lozada, right? Big guy who could take his punch, who was willing to trade, who started hitting him with crosses after he was out of the ring for 13 months. I believe Verdejo is a ringer. We'll use the term, right? I think against Lomachenko, who beat him in the Olympics, right? Verdejo has been trying to have that rematch for years. He would give Lomachenko a very difficult fight. I think Verdejo is a better athlete than Teofimo Lopez. Lopez is a technician, but he's stiff. Right? He's stiff. Verdejo is fluid. There's a big difference in the presentation. I believe Verdejo would make Lewis look robotic. I'll agree there's an open question on whether Verdejo could take Lopez's punch. Verdejo is saying that it would be a statement if he were able to KO Nakatani. In my opinion, this is the fight of the weekend. Nakatani against Felix Verdejo, I believe Verdejo is special. Right? I believe he's special. I think he puts on a show. I think Lopez didn't know how to move around the pocket. Right? Lopez, superior skills to Nakatani, but he was there to get hit with looping shots. I think against Verdejo, those looping shots are going to come back to haunt Nakatani because they're countering opportunities and a guy who's a bit more fluid than Lopez, who has a different, let's say, rhythm in the ring, should be able to get out of the way of Nakatani shots, counter him to death, make him pay, beat him up. Let me also say, too, one of the secrets to finding special fighters and this guy used to be widely considered to be special, right? Understand inactivity and then the loss to Lozado got him off a lot of people's list. Lozada got him off people's list. Folks, he's 27. He's back and he's with Guillermo Rigondeau's trainer. He's with a guy who trained Luis Ortiz. He's with Ismail Salas, one of the best trainers in boxing. A guy who emphasizes counterpunching, right, and an ability to trade, not a lot of movement. You know how Freddie Roach fighters like to move around the ring. Salas fighters are technical, right? They're around the pocket. Think Rigondeau. So, I like Felix Verdejo over Nakatani in what I expect to be the fight of the weekend. I also like Shakur Stevenson in his fight over Khan Carey. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.